Okay. This is a little side project on top of doing the dynasties. I also want to go through and kind of give you guys an idea about how I set my dynasty up and kind of get the ball rolling, um, kind of a how-to video. First thing that you do for me is I'm going to go through and I'm going to be redshirting any freshman, um, sophomore that doesn't have a freshman, uh, like a, a true freshman underneath them. Um, here you can see that I've got a pretty good line of I've got a senior uh, right now at quarterback. I also have a sophomore redshirt and a freshman redshirt behind him. But I also have a freshman, a true freshman behind him. So what I'm pr tr uh, trying to do is I'm trying to maximize the amount of time that these guys get to um, be on campus and progress as players. So my goal is, is to have a senior redshirt, um, a junior redshirt, a sophomore redshirt, a freshman redshirt, and then the freshman that um, I have just recruited come in so that he can be redshirted the next season. So um, pretty much what you're doing is here I'm trying to figure out who's got the better chance to be the better player. Obviously it's this guy um, because he's, you know, obviously he's a little bit better. I do this and I'm going to have two senior redshirt running backs and I'm going to have a junior redshirt running back. Um, they're both going to be pretty solid players. And this year I'm going to be playing with my senior, my junior redshirt, and my freshman redshirt. So what this also does for you is it takes away some of your recruiting needs for the next year. So it breaks down, really cuts your needs in half and makes them more manageable from each season um, as they go. Uh, the downside is is that it is a little bit more difficult the first two years that you're playing because you're going to be playing basically with minimal scholarship players. The first year you're looking at playing with about somewhere between 45 guys but uh, and, and mostly second and third string guys. Um, then the next year you're looking at basically playing with all of those guys again, and they're going to be your starters, but they should, in most situations, be seniors and uh, and juniors at that point so that you have your freshmen in this class you're about to recruit for that will be redshirted next season, and then by the time that you get to that third year, you're going to have a pretty solid freshman redshirt class while you're redshirting another freshman class and that, that's when you're really going to start seeing your players step up and step into that starting role. So the goal is is to minimize your recruiting needs, get the guys that you do need for not just this season, but then next season as well, and then you minimize your needs for next season. You could really break down and focus on the specific groups and, and positions that you need to focus on each year. Normally, you want to start out offensively. We'll get into that a little more uh, once I start doing the recruiting. Right now, we're just trying to figure out how we're going to spread this out and even out the classes so that you have manageable needs every single year. So as you can see, I've got a senior red shirt. I have a sophomore red shirt. I've got two sophomore red shirts. And it looks like one, two, two freshman red shirts. i got two true freshman, I've got a true junior and a true sophomore. First off, um, the reason I'm redshirting the true sophomore is to even out that freshman class, the freshman redshirt class, um, so that I have three, I'm going to have three uh, redshirt freshmen, or excuse me, redshirt sophomores next year. I'm going to have two redshirt freshmen. I'm going to have a redshirt senior. I'm going to have Hopefully, if if I go ahead and I'm going to redshirt him too, I'm going to have three redshirt sophomores. And I'm only going to have one redshirt senior who's probably not even going to play, and I'm going to end up cutting him because he's so far down on the depth chart. Um, anyway, so pretty much what you're doing is, like I said, you're evening out your classes and you're um, setting yourself up for success by not having to have as big of a first initial or second class uh, in terms of recruiting needs 
so it makes it more manageable. Your uh, your recruiting more manageable. This is an easy one. Anytime you got that freshman, true freshman, right down there at the bottom of the uh, depth chart, you want to go ahead and uh, redshirt them. Now here's a good one. You got a redshirt sophomore and you got a redshirt freshman and you have a true junior who's behind both of those guys on the depth chart, leave that guy alone. He's not gonna he's never gonna play for your team. He's got two younger guys ahead of him that are way better. And that there's really no point in wasting a red shirt on him. Um, so you, you're going to have a little bit of depth at the left tackle for the next uh, year or two, pretty much, until he graduates. This is another good situation. You have a true senior, you have a red shirt sophomore, and a red shirt freshman. Your senior, who is clearly not going to be projected to be a better player than both the guys beneath him. He's he's good. He's better than them now, but eventually, down the line, he is not going to be as good as what these guys are going to be. Maybe even within the next year, you're going to see your uh, th- this guy right here is going to be already better than the overall that this guy is this year. And you have this guy who is a freshman redshirt, and in two years, he's going to be better than what this guy is right now. So, you can get these guys' experience to play this year. You can take a need right off of your board immediately by redshirting this guy because now that he's not leaving, you no longer need a left guard in this class because you're redshirting him, and you're pretty much saying, I'm going to see if I can get him this year. If I can't get a left guard this year, then I'm going to put that on the back burner and I'll try to get it next year. So you have essentially already have taken care of a need for this next year. So we're going to the center. This is obviously going to be a huge need over the next couple of years. You have no control over this. So this is your first year. You've got a senior redshirt and you've got two junior redshirts. Now, you can get creative if you do not get a, a, a center in this recruiting class. Um, you can move some things around once you get to uh, player positions in the off season. So not anything we can do right here um, immediately, but definitely something we're going to have to revisit in the future in the off season after our first year. So uh, again, we've got a red shirt senior and a red shirt junior ahead of a true freshman. We're going to go ahead and we're going to red shirt that guy. Um, this is the same situation as we just had back here a minute ago. Um, we've got a guy who is older. He um, is ahead of ahead of the depth chart of a guy that's younger than him. If you go ahead and you redshirt this guy, you're pretty much putting uh, here in three years, you're putting two needs at the same position. So you just let this guy go. He's going to play. Um, if you want to, you can even go ahead and you can make this guy a starter at, at that position, and it's going to make him better down the line, and he's going to be better than that guy. Um, I mean, and, and maybe even the next year he'll be better than what he is. So I just le- I'm just letting it go. I'm letting it go. That's that. That's not a need that you need for this year. That's a need for next year. If you can get it taken care of this year, obviously that's ideal. But there's no guarantee of that. So we're going to just hold off for at least another year at that position. We're letting this guy go. Okay, we've got two guys in the same year. We're obviously going to split those guys up uh, depending on what a right in. Okay, we've got a red shirt. Uh, sophomore over here. We're going to go ahead and we're going to redshirt this guy. So we can't move this uh, one of these two guys to the right end position because we've already got a sophomore redshirt at uh, at the right end uh, in, in that year. Now what we could possibly do is move that guy to this to be a defensive tackle and he, uh, he would be in the same year as this guy. Right now, again, this is an immediate need. You've got three senior red shirts. So if you miss at this position during your recruiting cycle, when you get the player positions, you can move one of these two guys over to your defensive tackle, and suddenly now you've got three defensive tackles. You really, realistically, only need one in your next class, maybe two. Um, but again, it's it's going to cut down a need somewhere down the line. 
but right now you can't really do anything about it. That's Defensive tackle is going to be a big need for us this year. Ah, here we go. This is my favorite one. You have a senior red shirt, a true senior, you have a red shirt freshman, and you have a true freshman. So you're going to red shirt this guy. So now you only have one need at this position this year. All right. And you're going to red shirt this guy. It takes away some of your depth. But what it does is down the road, your freshman, your true freshman is going to be better for it. He's going to, there's going to put a year in between him and this guy right here. So you're stretching out um, your depth chart for another year. So you have three now. Uh, left outside linebackers going into next year for sure. And, it, again, it, it, it's, a, it's a position, if you get a guy, that's great. If you don't, you don't have a need for it immediately. You've taken care of your need for next year. You've taken, you've taken one need off of your board again for this season. So you're making your needs, your needs more manageable. Okay, this is another perfect situation. You've got a sophomore true sophomore, you've got a freshman, true freshman, and you've got a junior redshirt right in between them. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to go ahead and redshirt both of these guys, okay? Thinning out the depth chart again, but essentially what we're doing is we're buying both of those guys who are clearly, um, they're, they're going to be way better than this guy is going to be ever. But we're buying them another year and another, uh, and another training period uh, at the end of the year when we go through the off season, and that's huge. Um, you, this guy, he's 73. That's pretty average for a freshman. But with that training at the end of this uh, season, that dude you're looking at, now he's starting maybe somewhere between like a 76 and a 78, which is a very, very good uh, good start for a freshman. So you've, you've bought guys more time to get better down the road. You're thinning yourself out, but this isn't going to be an easy season anyway. So we're going to the right outside linebacker position. Now, again, we've got a sophomore red shirt. We've got a true freshman. Now, this true freshman, he's not all that great. So what we're going to do is we're going to red shirt the senior. We're going to have these two playing this year. This guy is going to be your starter. And, uh, you know, again, we're going to see what we can do as far as recruiting goes for outside linebackers this year. Hopefully we can land a guy that's got a little bit better than a 65 overall starting uh, grade. Um, it really kind of depends on what you're going to do with this guy after the training period and to see what kind of guy that you get this year in this class. Um, again, we'll revisit that later when we get to cut players. So this is another one. You see here we've got – Three juniors, one of them's a red shirt, and we've got two sophomores who are both uh, red shirts. So, can't do anything about the red shirts. If you red shirt these guys, what you're doing is you're essentially putting three guys in one class. If you don't red shirt one of these guys, you're going to have three guys in one class. So, either way, you're in a lot of trouble here. So, what I suggest doing is red shirting the guy in the middle. You're cementing. You still have your two starters, okay? Um, you're buying this guy another year to get a little bit better, okay, alongside these guys. And you're putting off a need for next year. Uh, you're buying another – you're pretty much taking away a need for your next season. We're managing. We're thinking ahead. We're not thinking just about this year. We're thinking about next year as well. So we're buying time – in both this year's recruiting and next year's recruiting and even the year after that. Okay, this is perfect. This is perfect. Okay, so what we're doing here. Now, you only need two safeties. That's You have to have at least two safeties on your roster. We've got that confirmed. No need for next year immediately. If you can get a guy, you want to get a guy. But... You don't have the pressure of absolutely having to get somebody in this class now. You have a freshman red shirt that's five years of having a, of having a, a, a safety, a free safety. You've bought not just one year, but two years with this guy. So now you've taken care of a need for next year. So you've pretty much bought yourself two years to get somebody at the free safety position. 
Okay. Lovely. Perfect. This one's easy. You've got a sophomore red shirt and you've got a true sophomore. The true sophomore is probably going to end up being a little bit more talented down the line as a strong safety. Uh, again, you've got your two safeties. If you can get a guy, that's great. If you can't, there's no pressure because you have both of your guys already. So, if in some whatever situation that you have multiple specialists, you're getting rid of one of them at the next cut player stage. So, we don't, oh, we don't have that right now. We don't have to worry about it. So, pretty much in that situation, what you're going to do is you're going to find out, okay, what rating is my older player, what rating is my uh, younger player, and who is going to be better for, you know, down the road? Um, who, who's going to be better eventually? Um, you kind of got to cross that road when you get to it. A lot of times what you're going to end up doing, if you get a better kicker and the younger kicker, then um, you're going to ask – you're going to ask the older kicker. Um, it's cold-blooded like that, but that's what you got to do. But it also gives you an idea about when you need to get your specialist. And it looks like, unfortunately, Cincinnati has both of their specialists as juniors, so you're going to have to either set uh, take one this year or take one next year. Um, but you're, you're going to have to find a way to get those guys in separate years so you're not wasting two scholarships every four years on a punter and a kicker. So you want to if you can do one every three years and one every four years, um, you know, get a year separation between them. Even that's better, and, that, and that's nice. You know, it takes a little bit of stress off, so you're not wasting scholarships. Like I said, two scholarships in one class for specialist. So we're no, <clears throat> we're done redshirting players. Now that we've got that all set up, we're gonna go over here and we're gonna go and set up our recruiting board. Um, I don't like the whole creating your prospects stuff. That's, I mean, it's just a fancy way to cheat. I'm not much on the cheating stuff, so uh, we're just going to go for it, see what the computer sets us up with. Now, the biggest mistake I see a lot of guys make is that they don't actively recruit every single week. They don't assess the progress they're making with their recruits every single week. We'll get to that once we get into the in-season recruiting but right now, uh, we got to find specific guys, okay? Um, and, the, and again, this, goes, this all goes back to a mistake I see a lot of guys make is you do this right here. It's so easy to just go straight to the guys who are your targets. And if you live and die by your targets, you're never going to get a number one class. You're never going to be able to out-recruit anybody in your online dynasty. You're never, ever going to be able to get the real power players that you can probably actually get that you don't realize that you can get. There's guys who don't really start their recruitment until the middle of the season because nobody is actively recruiting them. Think about it, okay? If if you, you go back here, let's look at the number one player. If every, okay, if you're talking about the top teams in the country, okay, that's terrible. That's, that, they don't even got any, okay, here we go. So you got true power like Blue Bloods, going after this one player. You've got Alabama, Oklahoma, Notre Dame, Ohio State, USC, and LSU all going for the same player, number two player in the country. <laughs> and you see a lot of guys go for guys like this, but they don't stand a chance. How is Cincinnati going to pull a guy from, uh, from out between all these guys, okay? This is the number two prospect in the game right now. And you're going up against college. These guys all have better shots at getting this guy because they all have better ratings than what you do right now. You've not built your team to the stage that these teams are at. So those guys only have a certain amount of points that they can distribute to recruits each week just like you do. So there are guys who have interest in schools like this, and a lot of people get scared because they see schools like this, and guys back here. And this is where you make your, uh, your money, okay? It's not in the first 100. It's in the second 100. Because look here. If you go through every single player from 100 to 150 and you try to find all the teams that 
all, I mean, all the guys that are interested in USC, that are interested in Oklahoma, that are interested in Alabama, and have these teams high up on their board, the top 100, they're probably, most of the time, they're going to go to Alabama, and they're going to go to Oklahoma, and those teams are going to, you know, pretty much sacrifice half of their season recruiting the same players in the top 100. Which means they don't have the points to allocate to the people in the second 100 or the third 100. The, there's a reason that ESPN does the top 300 recruits. There's a reason why that they call it the ESPN 300 because the, three, the top 300 players are the 300 best players in each class. So you can waste your time battling it out with Alabama, Oklahoma, Florida, all these teams that are going to be going after the, the, the players in the top 100, or you can start out in the second 100 and end up getting a better class than they do because these are all four-star guys without a country because they have these blue bloods that are all going after the top 100 players and they don't have the points to allocate and fight you for these guys that are back here. So you have to be very tactical in how you recruit and who you recruit, and we'll go into that a little more in a second. Now, going back to your targets. Now, we've discussed what some of our needs are. If you need to know what they are immediately, here they are. You need a fullback on offense. All right? Could have been a lot worse, but because of how we redshirted players, all our, our only need on offense is for a fullback. Now, Defensive tackle, far and away, is a big need. Okay, so we just, we told we talked. We got three seniors in this class, all red shirts. They're going to be gone. We need to get at least two. The other need that we know we need is going to be outside linebackers and um, eventually maybe some safeties. But the front, uh, excuse me, the front seven is really where we're going to need a lot of help, and that's going to be your offensive. Uh, uh, I mean, your defensive line and your outside linebackers and your middle linebackers. As you can see, that's where most of our seniors are on this defense. We've got seven players between the defensive end, the defensive tackle, and the outside linebacker. So we go back here. Boom. Four-star outside linebacker. Looks like he, for right now, might be a 71 overall player. He has us. He's number one interest. That guy's going on our board every time. We've got a four-star athlete. Again, seems to be a 70 overall. He's in a pipeline state. He's got us as the number one interest going on our board. All right? Quarterback, number nine. He's a scrambler. Now, here's where it gets tricky. I don't like scrambling quarterbacks, but I'm going to put him on my board anyway, and then, again, I'll show you how you do this tactical recruiting. Okay? Uh, we've got... 65 overall running back, essentially, but he is a four-star. I don't want him on my board. All right, middle linebacker. He's 21st ranked, pipeline state. As this is number one, we know we're going to need a middle linebacker in this class, possibly. Put him on the board. Now, this is this is where you get deep in. This guy has a sixth. We need a defensive end. Bad. So... This is where you got to use your brain, and this is where you really have to trust your gut. Proximity to home is really good, but this guy lives in Michigan, and he's got Central Michigan and Michigan State, who both are going to have an A+. You're beat already. You're beat already. The program tradition, Michigan State is going to far and away knock you out of that race, so they have an A+. So now they've got two A-pluses. All right, over you. Now, their rating is actually going to be a B plus, but I mean an A plus, but it's going to be better than a C plus. That's, that's the point that I'm getting at. Michigan State has a much better pro, uh, football program than what Cincinnati does. And now we're going into conference pre stage. Ours is a B minus. The Big Ten is going to be either an A, A minus, something like that. So you're beating all three of these categories. There is no way that you're going to be able to out recruit Michigan State. Because this is about where they're going to be recruiting. There's no way you'd be able to get this guy, unfortunately. You have to be realistic in this. So, 
we have no more number ones that we're willing to go after. So here we go. West Virginia is recruiting a guy out of West Virginia. Again, same same thing. West Virginia is going to beat you out for this guy. It's all about numbers. So clearly we've hit, we've come to an impasse with the guys that want to be on our board. We got four guys that want to be at Cincinnati in this whole class that we legitimately have a shot at. So now we start picking out guys at positions that we know we can probably land somebody at. Let's look at our competition right here. Now this guy, he's the number one quarterback in the class from St. Charles, Illinois. And the top three is Baylor, Oklahoma State, and Houston. This is a gold mine recruit. Let me show you why. Playing style, that changes every single week. You have a legitimate shot to pull this guy out from underneath all three of those teams based on how you play your games. So you throw for over 250 yards. You rush with your quarterback for over 100 yards. This guy's all yours. Just in that one category. Now, the championship contender, you tell me that Cincinnati doesn't have as good of a shot, if not better than Baylor, Oklahoma State, or Houston to get to the national championship, or even win their own conference, you can win that one. You can actually beat out Houston in this because y'all are in the same conference. And Coach Prestige, they may have the upper hand right now, but you know what kind of coach you are and what kind of season you're going to have. And what you're bringing to the table so you know that you can afford to take on this challenge because that is going to go in your favor. The other thing you need to take a look at is the top schools here. You also see West Virginia, Clemson, and North Carolina. So, in proximity, you can beat all those teams. Playing style, you can beat all those teams. This is a calculated risk. You're going to add that guy to your board knowing you've got a pretty good shot at bringing him in. Baymanette, Alabama. Alabama, Notre Dame, LSU. Top three. You can't beat that. You can't touch it. Don't even try it. All right. California, USC, Oklahoma, and Stanford. You're not going to touch it. Landry Park, Maryland. This is going to be a little bit more intriguing. This guy has a pretty good chance to play. He wants to play for a championship contender. And the proximity to home doesn't necessarily favor you. So, we're going to put a thumbtack in that and see if we can't find somebody that's going to match, our, uh, match us a little bit better. And what do you know, the next guy, proximity to home is important, conference prestige is important, and playing time is important. Your competition for this guy is Vanderbilt, Iowa, Missouri, Utah, Kentucky, Michigan State, and Wake Forest. This is your guy, and he's faster, so he's a speed back. So, it also looks like he's significantly stronger than most of these other guys. So, we're going to take him. Now, our need was for fullback. Let me go back to that. Michigan's going to get this guy. I mean, it's 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 a game over situation there. West Laco, that's close by Baylor. That's Baylor's guy. We've already come and talked about this guy. Oh, no, excuse me. We missed a guy there. Ignore that. Okay, so Dover, Ohio. And it looks like the top school's going after him. And I feel comfortable going after this guy. So that's going to be our guy. Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. Don't have a shot. Toronto, Canada. Don't have a shot. Danville, California. Don't have a shot. Carmel, Indiana. Don't have a shot. Not with the playing style right now. But the proximity to home and the television exposure. Those are two things we could probably change things around in. Playing style, like I said, that changes week to week. So... We'll put this guy on our board. No, I'll show you the work we're going to do with this guy. Now, here's another guy. Playing style, playing time, conference prestige. Look at the competition for this guy. He's the number five player in the class. 
And he's got Marshall, Louisiana Monroe, Troy, and Texas Tech as the guys that are fighting for his services right now. Now, you really, your only competition at this point in time is going to be Marshall. But here's the thing that really worries me. Why is this guy the number five wide receiver and he has no power five offers other than Texas Tech? So there's a good possibility this guy is a bust. Now, if he's not, that's a huge win for you. So we're going we're gonna to take this guy and we're going to scout him here in a minute. We're going to see what, what he's really bringing to the table. So we got two wide receivers on our board now. Okay. Now going back to this here. Let's see here. This may actually could be something you get going in your favor just because, now I know it's Alabama and Notre Dame, but this is Dickinson, Texas. Texas guys are unpredictable. They're wild cards in this game. Um, especially when you're recruiting against guys that are way, way far away from you. And proximity to home is not an issue to him. Playing style, tradition, and conference prestige. All things that matter to him. Alabama and Florida are going to be your big competition in this. So this is a flip of a coin for me. I'm feeling lucky. I'm going for him. Got to find another guy. We've already got one. So uh, we're going to call that good. We're going to call that good. Uh, defensive tackle. Illinois, you got Florida State, Nebraska, and Stanford going for this guy. I like it. We're going to go for it. Um, got to get another guy on the defensive line. We're just looking for something, anything that we can – Takeaway is positive for this guy, for this position. I mean, good grief. New York guy might be the person we need to go for just because of who we're going up against. Defensive end, Oregon, Ohio. Um, there's some stiff comp for this guy. But I feel like that we could probably make a run at him. I don't think that we'll maybe get him, but it's something we're going to try for. Man, Ohio State's just all over these guys from Ohio, and that really hurts being from Cincinnati, being at Cincinnati, and uh, not even being able to go into guys in your home state and be the first choice there. So, let's see here. You're just going for wild card people now at this point. Uh, Man, you're not going to be able to do that. Uh, That tradition thing is being a deal breaker on quite a few of these guys. I feel like we could probably get this guy. So, I'm going to start out with these 14 prospects. We're just going to scout them really quickly, kind of see if we need to throw any guys away, kind of see where they're actually going to be at. Now, for the sake of the video, I went ahead and I gave myself the ability to uh, uh, have 100% recruiting uh, or scouting. Um, so that, that way you can really, really see kind of what I'm getting into here about uh, how how you recruit and do recruiting really well. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. We're going to go back to this. We're going to make our overall uh, the thing that we're sorting by here. And you're going to see a lot of things, a lot of things. Not a lot of positive either, but this is this is how you recruit well. So, turns out that the scrambling quarterback is actually a lot better than the number one overall quarterback in this class. He's a bust. I don't want that on my board. Uh, let's see here. This outside linebacker, kind of a bust right now. He's a 65 overall. What am I going to do with that? He's off my board. Number 18, gone. 
he's not going to be any help. In the center, not really that good, turns out. 68, I can live with. I can live with a 68. So we're going to keep him, even though that he was, he's a little bit of a disappointment for me right now. And we're going to go right back down here to the All Prospects. And now we're going to dig into some athletes. So this is it's very important that you recruit um, as many athletes as you can because they are so diverse and and you can I mean you literally are getting a guy that pretty much can play multiple positions. What we want to do is get in a battle proximity to home and play style. Those are the two things that um, are always going to work out in your favor. Playing time, um, that's something that we can win. Playing time is another one. So you're already kind of seeing who our guys are going to be just based off of uh, who, we're, who we're recruiting and who we're recruiting against. If you can get in a cross-country battle with a guy who has uh, proximity to home and a playing style, you're going to usually end up getting that guy about nine times out of ten. Especially if that proximity to home is, like I said, close to you. Then it's game over. Oh, boy. Okay. I'm going to come back to this outside linebackers. It's the number nine guy that we had on our board. We don't want him right now. Proximity to home. We're going to try that. I don't know if it's going to work. So we added three more guys here to replace a couple of the guys that we had tried to get. So we're going to come right back here and get back to scouting some players. He holds up. Oh, he really holds up. You can see these guys are really actually looking a lot better than we originally planned. So... We've got a, a solid 13 targets right now. You're not going to be able to diversify all your points between these guys, but it's a start. And you have, like I said, you have to actively recruit every single week in order to really, really set yourself up. Now, we know that it's going to be a rough year. We know that we're playing with pretty much the bottom of the barrel. So we're going to make our schedule a little bit easier. Got to make sure you get those wins. Uh, we're going to play Georgia State. We're going to play Akron. I'm not going to play any FCS teams just because I'm not that bush. I'm a little bit bush, but I'm not completely bush. I'm not 100% bush. I'm just a little bit bush. I'll play Louisiana Monroe, except for I'm pretty sure they're both in the Sun Belt. And I don't like playing teams in the same conference, so we're not going to do that. Uh, let's see here. Mac, I'm already playing against Akron. Is Florida International Conference USA in this game? Yes, they are. Okay, so we're going to do that. Oh, man, I'm already playing. Okay. So I'm going to change from, because you want to have, uh, you want to have those, uh, rivalry games. That's what I was trying to say. And if you're feeling real crazy like I am, throw in a low level uh, Power 5 team. I don't like the SEC, so I already know who I'm looking for. Oh, man. And they aren't even. Oh, goodness. I was going to cry if they had them available to play. But they aren't in here. I'll play South Carolina. Screw it. So, let's see here. We got a full schedule. Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to open this week. I'm going to give myself a home game later on this year. Against Vanderbilt. Yeah, sweet. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put myself open this week. 
And I'm going to schedule myself for a home game here. And I'm going to play Old Dominion. There you go. Home game against Old Dominion, home game against Vanderbilt. And now, as you can see, I'm going to go ahead and make myself open on this day. And I am going to play Florida International here in a home game. So the reason that I'm doing this with my schedule, and let me go ahead and tell you right now, is that you know that later on this season you're going to need home games so that you can schedule home visits with recruits on recruiting trips to come and take their officials. So basically, you want to set this up in three waves. For the guys that are really, really about going to your school, you want to do the early season. So you're talking about like a Florida International. You know that you're not going to be able to really schedule a visit on the first week, the second week, and most likely not on the third week. It's usually about week four that you can start making home visits. Uh, or, or, excuse me, having campus visits. So make yourself available on the fifth week and the, fi uh, the fourth and the fifth week to start scheduling those and work the first couple of weeks on your recruiting and shifting your points, seeing who that you're trending in a positive direction with and who that you're trending in a not positive direction with and get them the heck off of your board. Move on and we'll find out which guys that we need to go ahead and use when that comes along. So we've got our schedule set up. We're going to save that. We have our recruiting board set up. We got that. We have our players red-shirted and ready to go. We got that. Guys, listen. This is the first of many how-to videos. Stay tuned for my next one next week. We're going to go ahead, or not next week, but ne I mean, in a you know, week in the game. Uh, and we're going to go through how you go ahead and you're going to set up your recruiting points week one. Uh, also, we're going to go ahead and play that game. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to show you what you need to make your goals for that game and how to go ahead and uh, get those recruits uh, to start lining up those visits early in the season. I hope you guys come back and visit this one. I really feel like this is going to be a good series, and this is going to help take your NCAA 14 online dynasty playing to the next level. Signing off, this is Matt with the Prairie Report.